I'm so happy to be with you guys are here with me. It is a bright and sunny Saturday here in Saginaw, Michigan. Temperatures in the 60s, just really nice. Okay, uh, I'm sitting in front of my fireplace project here that I'm working on, and the reason I'm sitting instead of standing and talking to you is because my pain level on my back today is like through the roof. So I'm going to put on this smile and a happy face and do this because I love you all and because I love what I do here on YouTube and on the record. All right, in my collection of records, I have many that are of political nature, um, and then I have many that are of a historical nature other than politics, and then I have records that are political and funny. And the cool thing about that is that back in the day, we could laugh at our politics. You can't do that anymore. It's too ugly to laugh at politics today in the United States. We seem almost like we're a country divided, a country woke, and to make fun of or have fun with anybody is just, you can't do it anymore. Which is a shame because we've lost a lot by, by being the way that we currently are. The first record though that I want to show you, because I'm, I'm going to show you the comedy ones, a few of them that I have, was released, I couldn't find the date of release, but it is uh, early 1960s. And it is based on the Kennedy family. And it is called The First Family. And it features Vaughn Meter uh, starring in it. And it was presented by Bob Booker and Earl Dow, both quite well-known names. And it also featured uh, George Foster, Naomi Brossart, Norma McMillan, with, as I said, Dow, Dow, uh, Dow, Jim Leonard, uh, Bob Booker, Bradley Bloke and Bob McFadden with sound effects by Bob Prescott. I'm rocking back and forth, I'm sorry. Boy, that must be annoying. Produced by Robert Mack. Now, this album takes a humorous look at the Kennedy family, the first family, a, uh, a family that I thought brought elegance to the, uh, to the Capitol, an elegance that has long been missing until uh, Donald and Melania were in there. Anyways. The album, some of the track lists, um, The Experiment, After Dinner Conversations, Malayan Ambassador, Relatively Speaking, Astronauts, Motorcade, that one might not be so funny in light of what happened to the dear president, and The Party. But I'm going to read you a short blurb from the back of this album, and then I'm going to play a couple cuts from it. And it reads on the back, This album is for fun. Things are being suggested and said here about some of the great people of our time and perhaps the very fact that they are able to laugh with us, well they can't now because they're all gone, and enjoy this album is part of what makes them the great people they are or were. No one has more respect for the high offices and the people suggested here than to those who had a hand in putting this album together. This album can be played loudly at any time, night or day, in front of anyone, anywhere. People have a right to laugh, and that is so true. We have a right to laugh, and it's, it makes, makes you happy. What makes me unhappy is that somebody's dog chewed the corner of this record album, so not the album itself, but the cover. So the cover's not in great shape, but the album is in very good shape, the record, the disc. Now, um... Yeah, I just had a thought, my mind went blank. Boy, I hate it when that happens. But uh, I'm going to play a couple cuts here, and uh, then we'll move on to the next record. I noticed that you didn't touch your salad, either at dinner tonight or at dinner last night. Would you tell us why, please? Well, let me say this about that. Now, number one, in my opinion, the uh, fault does not lie as much with the salad as it does with the uh, dressing being used on the salad. <laughs> Now let me say that I have nothing against the dairy industry. However, I would prefer, I would prefer it if in the, in the future we uh, stuck to coleslaw. Next, next. The Thomas Jefferson Room, which I think you'll find rather interesting. President Jefferson used to come into this room and sit for hours just gazing out the window at the White House lawn. The White House lawn was a gift from Mrs. W.C. Ridgway <laughs> of Hollyhock, Virginia. 
The president and I decided to leave it just the way it was originally. It's lovely. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Now, after Kennedy was assassinated and a few years had passed, Jackie Kennedy met Aristotle and Assis, a rich Greek tycoon much, much older than she is. And people took offense to that because of the different stage. They thought she married him for his money and all that, but she wasn't in need of his money. She married him for whatever reasons. But this record is called Beware of Greeks Bearing Gifts. <laughs> and it was, an, again, it was a book, Bob Booker uh, production with George Foster. And also starring in it were Carol Corbett, Robert Dryden, Anthony Holland, Len Maxwell, Bob McFadden, Brian Rayburn, and Millie Slavin. And it was created and produced again by Bob Booker and, and George Foster, written by them also, along with Sheldon Keller and Howard Albright. Now, this record is dated 1968, and it was released by Musicor Productions. No, no animals chewed through this one. Um, I'm sure the label it's a Musicor. And it's in very good condition. And I love the cover artwork. So, so 1960s. Some of the tracks are The Bride to Be, Mama, Getting Ready for the Wedding, The Wedding, <laughs> The Press Conference, The Disagreement, The Tailor, The Telephone Call, A Quiet Evening at Home, The Big Fix, Jackie, uh, The Paparazzi, Sisters, Chairman of the Board, and many, many others. So it is a fun though irreverent look at our former first lady who to me is a picture of elegance she was when she was in the White House and she was also when she was with Mr. Onassis. So let's take a listen to just a couple cuts from that record and I'll be right back with you with another one. The Bride to Be. Good afternoon, America. We're here on the pier of the remote Greek island of to report the wedding of the year. The bride-to-be, a gracious and smiling figure, has been posing in the hot Grecian sun for the past three hours for hundreds of photographers. It's been a tiring afternoon for us all. We've just been told that she's ready to make her first public statement since the announcement of the wedding. Getting ready for the wedding. Now, the dressmaker wants to know when you're coming to your final fitting. Tell her I'll be there at 11. <laughs> Madam, the caterer is here. Tell him I'll be right down. Yes. Your sister is calling. Tell her I'll call her back in half an hour. Madam, what time do you want the press conference? I'll see the gentlemen of the press at six this evening. Yes? Madam, the Vatican is on the phone. <laughs> Tell them I'm not in. <laughs> now, pres presidential politics have always fascinated me. And the first one I remember was that of uh, uh, Kennedy Nixon. I was probably about six or seven years, maybe six years old, I think. But I remember watching the debates with my dad and mom in front of her black and white TV in their large living room in Bridgeport, Michigan. I was the uh, remote control, actually, because, because we didn't have remote controls then. Somebody had to get up and physically change the channel. And that generally was me. It sucked being the youngest sometimes. But the next album deals with the political campaign of 1968. And this is called... Pat Paulson for president. And I don't think it was ever a serious run, but um, some people took it seriously. I don't know if you ever, if you got garnered any write-in votes or anything, but uh, Pat Paulson, Paulson was a comedian um, of that era. He was a very funny man, very uh, straight-faced um, type guy, which was part of his comedy. Um, it says, politics is a dirty business, and this is a dirty record. And it was released by Rubicon River Records, by Mercury Records, and that was done in 
1968, as I said. So let me uh, read a short clip from the back of here, and then we'll take a listen to a few cuts from here. Actually, it was my grandfather who first said politics is a dirty business. He took a dim view of our national political scene and considered all politicians rascals. I wonder what you'd think today of the politicians. Rascal scoundrels and thieves. They had it on the money. He harped on, the endless, on this endlessly and my grandmother and I and the rest of the family with the result that we distrusted the major party leaders and agreed that bedfellows make strange politics. <laughs> I'd like to play on that. And since then, like millions of other Americans, I have sought a stalwart, straight-talking candidate who would rise above the purple mountains of majestic graft and the golden waves of corruption and tell it like it is in such a man, such a candidate is Pat Paul. It was written by Ralph Story, and it goes on, but I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. It's interesting, if you lived through the 1960s or the mid-late mid, mid late 1960s, you will grasp the humor of this. Uh, readily because it, it, it is so cool. Credits include, it was produced by Cecil Tuck and Gary Blair. Blair. Commentary was written by Ralph Story. Pat Paulson's material was written by Cecil Tuck, Mason Williams, hmm. Alan Bly, Lauren uh, Paulson, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and on and on and on and on. Art direction was by Lee Weisbrook. And press conference reporters <laughs> Cecil Tuck, Ralph Story, Ralph, Ralph, Ralph Story, Ralph Story, and Bill Thompson. I think payments are starting to take effect because I'm not talking quite as coherently as I usually do. I apologize for that. Some of the tracks include Meet the Candidate, Two Cows, Soldiers Lament, Freedom to Censor, I Will Not Run, I Will Not Serve, Humble Beginnings, The Age of Reason, Ruthless Denial, Big Shot, The Victory Rally, and meet the prize, Mr. Pat Paulson. So that's a cool record album. Funny record album. I'm going to play a couple cuts from that and then I'll be back with you with the next one. Actually, in the past several months, a great groundswell of popular support has arisen throughout this land and the United States, demanding my candidacy for the presidency. But let me reiterate, I do not want the support, as I've said before, I would rather be known as I am today, a common, ordinary, simple savior of America's destiny. I met these people face to face, and I told them that I'm not interested in being president. Well, I guess that settles that then. So, uh, I certainly hope so, and I appreciate this opportunity so early in my campaign to <laughs> make my position clear. Now. Well, you can't come right out and say you're not a candidate for president like that on television. There are rules and laws governing who is qualified to not be president. There was a show on TV. Uh, back in the mid to late 1960s. I thought I turned back in the late to mid 1960s. And it was called That Was the Week That Was. And I, I know my mom and dad didn't, they never missed it. Because it recapped all the political and other events of that particular week. And it did it in a tongue in cheek way it, it, that mocked them, even though they were serious situations. As I said earlier, people could laugh at the political situation back in those days. Hard to imagine, but they did and it was fun. But I bring that up because this album is That Was the Year That Was uh, by Tom Leher, Leher, L-E-H-R-E-R, Leher, Leher, something like that. I can't say it, sorry. <laughs> and it was released on, what was it released on? Reprise Records. Reprise Records. Oh yeah, they released a lot of Dean Martin's early stuff. But anyways, um, the words of music on the album, which are, you know, again, all politically and historically of the year that this was released and, uh, and making fun of those things. So again, if you went through those years, you'll understand this humor a-okay. But uh, the words of music by Tom Lear uh, recorded July, July 1965 at the Hungry Eye 
San Francisco, produced by Jimmy Hiller. Recording engineer was Don Geis. Cover design was Eric Martin. If you don't like this record, you'll certainly not enjoy these other ones that says by Tom Lear. <laughs> okay. Some of, the play, play, some of the tracks on the playlist are National Brotherhood Week, MLF Lullaby, George Murphy, The Folk Song, or The Folk Army, The Folk Song Army, Smut, Send the Marines, Pollution, So Long, Mom, a song from World War III. Okay, we'll play, let's see if we can take a clip from that and listen to it. Whatever Became of Herbert, Hubert, New Math, Alma. Who's next? Warner Von Braun. And the Vatican, the Vatican Rag, which I think the current Pope is on. I didn't say that. I am so sorry. Excuse me just one moment. Did I not tell you that I'm recording? Well, I told you I would holler when I'm done. So now you're going to be on my recording and you're going to be annoying. <laughs> Okay, let's not talk about what you're calling about, because I know what it is. I will talk to you in about five minutes. Bye. Love you too. Bye. I should cut that out, but I won't. There's my stepson, who lives here with me. He's a total pain in the ass sometimes. Okay. Where were we? Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a listen to this. I'm gonna read you just one brief clip here. Yes, Tom Lehrer is here again with more of the tasteless japs and tired wheezes, which only a few years ago elicited from critics comments ranging from competent in variety to occasionally amusing in the New York Times, which has become nothing but a scandal sheet today. And once again, laden rapper, a rapier in hand, you know, uh, that uh, in hand, he strides out fearlessly in search of adversaries to skewer, first making sure that they are already head down and out. Okay. So I ready to track this, listen to a few clips from that, and then we'll move on. Be right back with you. This year we've been celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Civil War, and the 50th anniversary of the beginning of World War I, and the 20th anniversary of the end of World War II. So all in all, it's been a good year for the war buffs. <laughs> and a number of LPs and television specials have come out, capitalizing on all this nostalgia. With with particular emphasis on the songs of the various wars. I feel that if any songs are going to come out of World War III, we better start writing them now. <laughs> I have one here. <laughs> you might call it a bit of pre-nostalgia. This is the song that some of the boys sang as they went bravely off to World War III. So don't wait up for me But while you swelter down there in your shelter You can see me on your TV Do your teaching known as the new math So as a public service here tonight I thought I would offer a brief lesson in the new math tonight We're going to cover subtraction This is the first room I've worked for a while It didn't have a blackboard so we will have to make do with more primitive visual aids, as they say in the ad biz. <laughs> Consider the following subtraction problem, which I will put up here. 342 minus 173. Now, remember how we used to do that. Three from two is nine, carry the one, and if you're under 35 or went to a private school, you say seven from three is six, but if you're over 35 and went to a public school, you say eight from four is six. <laughs> carry the one, so we have 169. But in the new approach, as you know, the important thing is to understand what you're doing rather than to get the right answer. <laughs> the last one I want to share with you today is by Stan Freebird, and it's called Stan Freebird Presents the United States of America. Now this was released, uh, yeah, this was released in the, in the 60s, late 60s. I doesn't have an exact date on it. It was re released by Capitol Records which were notorious for not putting uh, a year date on their records. And so was um, RCA, uh, which was really annoying because, you know, it's nice to know what you're there from without having to go to the computer and, and look at it. But anyways, 
This is an original musical review for records, and it is a uh, satirical review, especially created for Capitol Records. And on this one, uh, we have Word, Words of Music uh, by Stan Freeman, and music arranged and conducted by Billy May, narrated by Paul Fries. That's a, that's a, a, a well-known name. Featuring Jesse White with the Judd Conlon Singers and so many more. I'm not going to read all those. And Cat Dancing by Maurice Kelly. And track list includes the overture. It's a round, round world. Uh, take, an Indian, <laughs> take an Indian to lunch this week. Under the double turkey. <laughs> Top hat, white feather, and tails. A Boston Tea Party. A man can't be too careful with what he signs these days. Everybody wants to be an art director, command decision, Yankee Doodle, go home. And the Battle of Yorktown and then the finale. So we're going to listen to some cuts from that in a second. Um, these are all fun records, and I hope that you have enjoyed the program. I won't be back after these cuts. Until next time, I will be back. I hope. Uh, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed these records. All of these, all... These were given to me by my friends Bill and Judy Wigner over at Records and Tapes Galore here in Saginaw, Michigan on the west side of Court Street. This is not a paid announcement. They are my dear, trusted, and much appreciated friends who have helped me in innumerable ways. And uh, so I appreciate them a lot. And those records were gifted to my collection from them. I hope you've enjoyed them. I love you all on the other side of that screen. And I hope you have an awesome day blessed week. Stay healthy, stay safe, and pray for America, the United States. God bless you. Love y'all. The Early Years has arrived in great numbers, not only at Miami, but at Jamestown, at Plymouth, and at Salem, Massachusetts. The Puritans have established a thriving colony, enjoying all the social and cultural refinements of a modern society. Hiya, Harv. Who are you taking to the witch burning Saturday night? Uh, Prudence Adams. Who are you taking to the Rotary Club luncheon? I haven't got a date yet, but I hear it's going to be quite a spread. Well, Mayor Pennypacker, how's it look for re-election? Great, great, great. Never look better. Yeah, what about the Indian vote? What do you mean by that? Well, you're not too popular with the Indians. They could lose you the election. That's possible? Well, they outnumber us. Well, that's the trouble. You give them an inch and they take over. But, Mayor, they were here before we were. We moved in on them. So we did. Well, there's just something about them. Boston Harbor, 1774. Two figures huddle on the deck of a cargo ship. There in the darkness. Whoops. Jeez, Charlie, you knocked that whole load of tea in the water there. Well, I miscalculated with the block and tackle, that's yeah, all. Yeah, well, I mean, you blew it. You missed the whole deck there. Yeah, well, maybe nobody will notice. Well, what do you mean? There's tea floating all over the place. I mean, how can I go and demand an hourly increase for you guys? Yeah, with yeah, well, fringe, I, I, No, I, with uh, fringe benefits and all that, if... My men keep knocking stuff overboard. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't uh, do any good, Charlie. Now... <laughs>